It's been overwhelming today. Two massive stories, Darren Goff. Let's start with Jose Mourinho, sacked by Spurs, and they've got a Carabao Cup final around the corner, live on Talk Sports Sunday. Incredible. What is going on? Is that just to stop him leaving with another trophy under his belt? I remember um, Solskjaer only a couple of weeks ago in some managers count their trophies well they've stopped Jose getting another trophy and if they win at the weekend it should be his trophy it shouldn't be Ryan Mason's I mean how, how can he have an his CV FA Cup winner what if Ryan Mason and Chris Powell pick Deli Alley and he scores the winner and Spurs play great football the kind of football they've not been playing for weeks who under? got them there were they likely to win who got them there against Stoke and it Brentford you, and a bye against you, Orient. You keep talking about that, but it doesn't matter who you play. It's getting to the final. Leicester fans, you ask Leicester fans, if they were bothered who they're going to be playing in the cup final, they're just pleased to get there. The players, look at Schmeichel's interview, how pleased he were, but they've got to a cup final. Well, Mourinho got them there and he got the boot. Like, I'm not saying Mourinho should have stayed at Tottenham, by the way. I would have said... Let, it sounds like it. I would have said win or lose next week... If they, if they don't want him there, fair enough. Off he goes. But he takes the trophy with him. Now, so it's like Pe um, Poch when he took over at PSG, first game, wins a trophy. How is that Poch's trophy? Won the game. I, no, I, I, How is I, it I hear Poch's what you're trophy? I think what you're missing is there's a Premier League game in between, which is live on Talk Sport this midweek on Wednesday. Uh, and I think they want the three points from that. Listen, I don't think many Spurs fans will be uh, upset that Jose has gone. I think they were sick of no. him, sick of the football. We'll get more into that at five o'clock. But if you want to have your say, 087172 and, of course, um, I feel for Jose because he'd uh, just got them into a European Super League as well. And then he gets the sack. Can uh -huh. you believe that? Amazing. That's harsh, isn't it? This European Super League is the most gigantic story, I think, of this season. Well, and it's going to run... It's getting legal now. Really seriously legal. Well, what, what's annoyed me about when I look at this European Super League, and it's been massive, and it's all morning uh, aid... But when it comes down to it, it's about the arrogance of some of these owners of the current clubs, whether it be Liverpool, especially the Americans. The pure arrogance and saying we're the founders of football. No, you're not, mate. In 1988, there were 12 founders. And Liverpool weren't on there. Manchester United weren't on there. Chelsea weren't on there. Man City weren't on there. Arsenal weren't on there. And guess what? Tottenham weren't. Do you want me to tell you the 12? The famous 12? Accrington, Aston Villa, Blackburn, Bolton, Burnley, Derby, Everton, Notts County, Preston North End, Stoke, West Bromwich Album, and Wolves. They were the founder members of the Football League in 1988. None of these so-called big clubs who founded football. Football did invent before... Liverpool, before Manchester United, before Manchester City, before Chelsea. It did aid. And guess what? When it comes down to the Europa League, guess who the first European team was? Wolverhampton Wanderers. Floodlit game, 1954-55 season. It wasn't Manchester United, Ed. It wasn't Liverpool. It wasn't Chelsea or City or Tottenham and Arsenal. It were Wolves. They're not the founder members. Those clubs are the founders. I think it's a great point. And, and I think this European Super League has been met uh, with ridicule and criticism, but there is a real fear that it's going to happen. Uh, just to fill you in on the details of it, 12 have signed, because there's so much that's happening off the back of it, various meetings going on. UEFA have come out with their reformed Champions League proposals as well today, which confuses the whole issue. So let's sort it all out. We will uh, speak to somebody who's uh, been following that UEFA meeting very shortly, but 12 clubs have signed up for it, this European Super League breakaway, including six Premier League clubs, as you say, United City, Arsenal, Spurs, Liverpool and Chelsea. So it's going to be, eventually, they hope, 15 clubs who are paid £300 million to join. They will slice off huge amounts of money from the TV and sponsorship and decide for themselves who else gets invited. There'll be five other invites that they will dish out. I mean... That... Well, Ajax are thinking about it, aren't they? I think they're one of the clubs that have been mentioned. Um, Porto have said no. The German clubs are saying no mm. so far. So it, uh, PSG, I believe, are saying no as well. Wow. So, it, you know... It, I mean, how can it be a Super League when you haven't got Bayern Munich and PSG? When you look at the Champions League over the past few years, Bayern won it last year... PSG were in the final. Guess what? PSG are now in the semi-final again mm. and could well win it this year. So you could have a European 
Super League without the last two winners of the Champions League in it. How disgusted are you, though, with the with the English clubs that are involved? Because I think, you know, I, I look at it, it's going to get very legal. Man United's Joel Glazer is vice president of this European Super League, and he said it brings oh. together, quote, the world's greatest teams and players. Now, who the hell is he to decide who the greatest teams in the world are? Who the hell is he <laughs> to decide who the greatest players in the world are? Who is he? I mean, and, and how on earth... A Spurs and Arsenal in that number. Well, they're a club, uh, Glazier, who took one billion already out of Manchester United. And if they get into this European Super League, they'll be taking another couple of billion out uh, as well. So I can understand totally how Manchester United fans feel about this. We saw and heard Gary Neville live on TV mm. uh, talking about it yesterday. Every Manchester United fan will just this will just is the final nail for them and the Glazers, and I'm sure it started. Uh, the ball rolling with the Liverpool owners as well, by the way, when it comes down to it. But how can it be elite Super League clubs? Yes, on the history and what they've won, but you've got Barcelona, skint, Real Madrid, come by a player in the last window, had to send Bale to Tottenham to pay half his wages. But you've got Arsenal, skint, having to buy a player and get the money borrowed over five years at 72 million, you've got Tottenham need the money to buy a new stadium, which they've bought, which is fantastic, but they now need to pay the debt off. you got, you know what I mean? You can keep going on and on and on. These clubs, Juventus, have got to pay a huge sum back by end of June. Inter Milan have already said the financial emergency funding they needed in February mm. to help them get through the season. They're going to be champions. These are self-appointed great clubs. They basically decided we are the great clubs, so we're all going to get together. Man City were bought by a country, so somehow they're apparently now one of the greats. When what? What was it? Twenty-one years ago, they're getting beat by York and Wickham in, in the third tier. Chelsea were bought bought by a Russian oligarch, so apparently they're one of the greats. Arsenal never been European champions. Spurs haven't won the title for sixty years. How can they call themselves great? Man United can't cope without Fergie, so they've decided that to take themselves back to the top table, they're going to call themselves a great club and get involved in a European Super League. But the sickener for me is Liverpool. And uh, the fans are all disciples of Shankly. They know the history of that club. They know all the great quotes from that great man. He was the man who went and stood on the cop after retiring. This is the man who said football's nothing without fans. And how about this Shankly quote as well? He said, I believe the only way to live and to be truly successful is by collective effort with everyone working for each other everyone helping each other and everyone having a share of the rewards at the end of the day. That might be asking a lot, but it's the way I see football and the way I see life. Wow. Now, I think Jurgen Klopp absolutely subscribes to that philosophy as well, to Shankly's way. So I would be amazed if they follow through with this, Liverpool's owners, if Jurgen Klopp sticks around, I will be absolutely amazed. And what he really should do, if, if he believes in what Shankly believed in, and, and I genuinely think Jürgen yep. Klopp does I think he should just walk out of the football club because it's not the Liverpool he walked into no chance yeah, no way well, well I think that's to come I mean if it does get start to get serious and I think you've, you've talked at the top of the show is about lawyers are getting involved now and things like that I think there will be certain managers that do walk away mm -hmm. and don't want anything to do with it so that, that, that is to come down the line and Europe's elite Spurs Spurs Europe's elite well they're the seventh now they've hardly won a game they've sacked the manager They've just drew with Everton. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, because Everton are a decent side. And Arsenal, you're obsolete. They've just drawn against Fulham, scraped a point. They're mid-table. Mid-table. Yeah, I can see why they want to be in it, because they're gradually dropping down the big boys of the Premier League, mm. and they're worried they're going to get left behind by the rest. So they, I can see why they want to be part of it. I think the whole idea of the European Super League is disrespectful and in many different ways as well. It disrespects the traditions of the game. It disrespects the fans who have not been consulted. All this money, all this history and tradition and the fans haven't been consulted at all. It disrespects the clubs not involved who are being looked down upon for some reason. It disrespects the spirit of competition we've had in this country for decades. It's disrespectful because of its arrogance, I think, because of the assumption from the owners of these clubs that their club is superior, that their club is worthy of a guaranteed seat at the top table in this new competition, that their club should decide who else deserves an invite. That invitation thing, by the way, how ripe for corruption is that?
Mm. Wow. Do, do you know what I mean? Hey, growing up, you're the same age, you're similar age to me. Growing up, football clubs were owned by the local businessman, weren't they? Their business were right there in the heart of the city, at the heart of the football club. And gradually and gradually, even the clubs that are in Champions League, listen, they're, they're not innocent of all charges here. Championship, League One, League Two, they're all looking for the dream of that world richest man to come in and buy their football club. And this has been the problem now for, what, 20 years since the Premier League started? 30 years. Right, yeah, 30 years, 1992, was it? Yep. So it's going to go on and on and on. And this is the final nail. This is what they're after. The big boys now, they've established themselves, got these big stadiums, loads of money, rich owners, and they want to make it their own elite bubble. Mm. It's not going to happen, let me tell you. Well, I sincerely hope not. Let's get your views. This is the day when your views really count. The clubs haven't consulted you, but Talk Sport is consulting you the fans 08717 if you want to join us on the show and remember we're streaming live on youtube and facebook right now